As you get older, you get those things sometimes that remind you just how much time has elapsed, how much time has passed by, and how quickly time goes by. And I must confess that now that I'm 40, like I, I probably spend way too much time thinking about the past and looking at the past, not enough looking at the here and now and the future. But nonetheless, sometimes we learn the best from our past. We learn the best from our history. It's the best guide for going forward. I say all of that to say that it, it's unbelievable to me, absolutely surreal to me, that as I sit here now, March 26th, 2021, that today marks the 20th anniversary, the 20th anniversary of the last ever episode of WCW Monday Nitro on TNT. 20 years. Good Lord. Like, to give that some context, I was 20 when WCW was technically still a thing. I have lived half of my life without a WCW. There are people that may be freshmen or even sophomores in college or at university, as you might say in England, that weren't even alive when WCW was a thing. There are people in their mid-20s who may barely even remember WCW at all, let alone what it was and what it used to represent and all of that. So as I think about this today and I think about the last 20 years, you know, I know it's titled as a retro review and in some ways it is, but it's more just a reflection on what to me will always go down as one of the most unfortunate and saddest and darkest moments in the history of the professional wrestling business. Now, for those of you that maybe weren't alive at the time, you're saying, well, people died in the ring and done this and then that. Yeah, those are, those are bad and those, those suck. But this, this even can, you could say potentially has gone deeper because in no small part, the death of WCW two decades ago, and to a much lesser degree ECW around the same time two decades ago, uh, led to the death of the height of the power and the popularity of professional wrestling to heights that it has never come close to returning and only gets further away from as the years go by. Like I do not look back on a show like this with any warm feelings, any positive memories whatsoever. I, I, I hate everything about this show because of what it represented. Like the whole notion, the whole thought, you know, and this goes for the older fans, those maybe in the mid to late 40s or 50s that grew up on the WTBS wrestling back in the days and they remember Black Saturday when Vince McMahon appeared and it's like, oh, holy hell, what the hell did happen here? Where is, where is my Georgia Championship wrestling? Where are my guys? This is that type of moment and seeing and, you know, as, as you're getting ready for this show and it was going to come on that night, I will say there was a tremendous curiosity for me and millions of others because who knew what the hell was going to happen? Like it seems so surreal that Vince McMahon now owned his competition. Vince McMahon now stood alone, unchallenged and unquestioned as the absolute tightening king of North American professional wrestling. A title which he has never ceded, and it has certainly not been for the betterment of the business. But I remember seeing his face. And, and you know, I will tell you at the time, like WCW was god awful in 2001. And still, to me, light years better than most wrestling we would get today from any company. I don't care who it is. But it was really bad. But I grew up at a time, like I saw multiple peak eras of wrestling history. I've seen a lot of wrestling greatness. 
I feel bad for a lot of you that are younger that really haven't. You may think you have, you have not, or you have had to tell yourself because you love the art form, you love the form of entertainment, the genre, and you love what it can be and what it should be and what it's supposed to be. When you tell yourself that these things are great, when in reality they're not. I have actually lived that. I've experienced it, I've seen it, and that's where some of my frustration comes in so much. Because on the one hand, I know how much better it can be. I know how much bigger it can be. But on the other hand, we've gotten so fucking far away from that moment in time that I feel like a boomer talking about it. But Vince McMahon having the guts to have the simulcast where you're watching Raw on TNN or you're watching <laughs> Nitro on TNT and you're seeing Vince McMahon on both shows, like just surreal doesn't even begin to describe it. But I was pissed because I didn't want WCW to go anywhere. Yes, it had become kind of a farce and it had become kind of a joke. It was really, really poorly run at the time and the on-screen and in-ring product certainly was not stellar. It was certainly not peak WCW. But I always loved the fact that I had a WCW that I could go to. I could flip back and forth between both of those shows. And I knew that Vince McMahon buying WCW, we knew this was going to be the last Nitro. We knew that nothing good was going to come out of this. And it didn't. It's hard to knock Vince for doing what he did. It's not necessarily what he set out to do, but the opportunity came up. Sure, I'll buy WCW for four and a half, five million dollars. It won't mean shit without a television deal, but on the flip side... I take over these contracts unless they're contracts done through Time Warner and I got to wait for those to elapse, but I'll be the only show in town. Meanwhile, I'll get all the merchandising licensing and naming rights to everything involved with WCW and Vince being forward thinking at the time is saying to himself, shit, I'll make my money back so many more times over in terms of licensing and the intellectual properties that I now own that belong to WCW. Like I'm going to generate significant revenue streams from it and he absolutely did. God, I'm feeling a little depressed today thinking about it. You know, because this isn't just another year goes by. Like, this is 20 years. In some ways, I'm impressed that I'm even still on this planet. Probably other people just like me like that. But it's really depressing to think about. I have lived now basically half of my life without WCW. And remembering back how... WCW and all the greatness that it did and all the great things that it did for the business and for the fans and professional wrestling and frankly, the great things that it meant for WWF at the time. To see it being treated in this just like cast aside, doesn't fucking matter type of you know behavior pissed off millions of fans. It pissed me off. It pisses me off to this day. So I hear idiots talking about the invasion angle. I'm sorry to use the word idiots, but this is what it means to me. When I hear idiots talking about the greatness of the invasion angle, fuck you and fuck the invasion angle. They pissed off millions of fans. They took everything that we loved about a WCW or an ECW and completely, totally shit on it just so that way WWF could reign supreme. Now you look at this show. Booker T wins the world championship. He's their last world champion. Beat Scott Steiner in like five minutes. Of course this match didn't get any fucking time. Because now, especially with WWF there, they didn't give a shit. Depressing nonetheless. Now your last title change, your last world champion. It's cool that it was Booker T. You know, but I was thinking about the future. What's going to happen with Booker T? And then I remember how they brought him in in 2001 and what they ultimately did. Hey, we're immediately going to have him job out like a bitch to the rock. Well, fuck you for that. You know, thinking too about at the time, like I was a big Rey Mysterio fan and thinking about, you know, it was him and Billy Kidman taking on Shannon Moore and Evan Courageous and Kazayashi and Yang. Like, I'm thinking about three count. And I'm like, what's going to happen to these guys? And they got three and a half minutes on the fucking show. Shane Helms, Chavo Guerrero, two talents at the time, 20 years ago that I really liked. You know, they weren't big stars. They weren't huge 
but there were two guys that when I would turn into WCW, tune into WCW, they were two guys that I thought would do decent work in the ring. And they did. And they got four and a half minutes. Sean O'Hare and Chuck Palumbo beating Lance Storm and Mike Awesome in three minutes. I can go down the list. Sean Stasiak beating Bam Bam in a minute and a half. Mysterio and Kidman beating Elix Skipper and Kid Romeo. They won the Cruiserweight Tag Team Championship, which again was one of the major problems with WCW. Why the fuck did you have a Cruiserweight Tag Team Championship? But it's all crystallized with the two biggest, most notable thing. I would argue Booker T winning the World Championship and being the last World Champion to the company was significant and notable too, so that's maybe the third thing. But the two biggest things that truly, honestly, everybody remembers from this show, and there are only two, there are only two, Number one is Sting and Ric Flair wrestling their last match against each other in WCW after all the years, all the history. How appropriate and fitting that the first main event match in Monday Nitro history, going back to that Mall of America show in September of 95, excuse me, where you remember the big reveal was Lex Luger shows up and everybody's like, what the fuck is going on here? It was Sting and Ric Flair that were in that main event. Now you come full circle five and a half years later, and as we say goodbye to WCW, we say goodbye to Monday Nitro, it's Sting and Ric Flair one more time in the ultimate of like depressing reality setting in, phoned in performances. Sting was out of shape, Ric Flair wrestled in a fucking t-shirt. Like it was bad, it was really sad and tragic to watch then, it's tragic to watch now. Because again, it was representing the end of something that had meant so much to so many millions. And it's not, a, it's not hyperbole to say this. Millions of people's lives in this country and throughout the world. What the hell is going to happen to Sting? What the hell is going to happen to Ric Flair? Like, we didn't know at the time. And it was depressing too it's to see like, this is Ric Flair, one of the greats of all time. This is freaking Sting. Sting is WCW. And you get kind of this half-assed match where Sting doesn't look great and Ric Flair's out of fucking shape to the point again where he's wearing a t-shirt. Like, it was sad. And then seeing all of this involving WCW and the death of WCW and the end of WCW being basically bastardized as a storyline plot device for Vince and Shane in their fucking WrestleMania match makes me sick to my stomach. If you want to know what's one of the many reasons that I hate that overrated piece of crap WrestleMania 17, here's what it is. Fuck you match and move marks that only care about that shit. Wrestling is about more than that. When it's at its best, it's about way, way more than the moves, you idiots. You see Vince sit there. Like, we couldn't even wait until after WrestleMania. Imagine how cool it would have been the, the, you want to talk about the Raw after Mania being a big deal. Imagine if this could have waited just one more week. Just one more week. And this would have been the shit that happened. The Raw after Mania. The Nitro after Mania. Instead, it didn't even feel like it was his own thing. Because WWF at the time, admittedly, understandably, is like, yeah, it's great. But we've also got to sit there and focus on WrestleMania. It's WrestleMania and it's coming up this Sunday. And the whole thing of Shane walking out, like, that's a surreal thing. You got Vince in, what was it, Cleveland, Ohio? He's on Raw, being simulcast on TNT. Meanwhile, here walks out Shane McMahon, his son, in Panama City Beach, Florida, and fucking WCW ring, talking about how he bought WCW. The name on the contract says McMahon, but it says Shane McMahon. And I know you cats that are in like your mid to late 20s probably think this shit was great and it's awesome. It wasn't. It was an abomination and a joke and I hate everything about it. Because again, it was one of these things that happened so quickly. It was one of these things that just represented so much bad. For years, it represented bad for professional wrestling because there wasn't that major, viable, legitimate number two company 
that talent could go to, that talent could use to get themselves better contracts and better situations, better deals, more days off, etc. You know, those things that you should actually care about if you're actually a fan of these wrestlers, but a lot of you don't give a shit about. You say, give me my matches and give them moves now! Well, you didn't have that. It took TNA years to get into a position where they could start overpaying for washed-ups and has-beens. But, you know, TNA also provided opportunities for other people in the business. But yet and still, as much success as TNA enjoyed at one point in time, it never got anywhere near to the level of a WCW, and we all know that. Just like the AEW and NXTs of the world, you take them this day, smash them together, they still don't even touch a fraction of what WCW used to be. SmackDown today certainly doesn't. Raw sure as hell doesn't now and hasn't for a decade plus. And it was on a night like this, watching this show for the last time, you know, you even started to think about, like, you know, I'm used to watching the NWO and Hogan turning on Savage and joining with the Outsiders to all the shit that happened in 97 with Luger in the NWO and Sting in the NWO. If you want to see hot and you want to see over and you want to see greatness and professional wrestling done right, how about frickin' Luger winning the world title when he was white hot in 97? All the shit that happened with Sting in 97, coming down from the fucking rafters, pointing his bat at Hogan in the NWO. Like, that shit was built up for over a damn year. The build-ups of DDP. Fucking Goldberg comes into the damn mix. I could go on and on and on. And to see all of it, Treated in such a bastardized, you don't even matter type of way. Still sticks in my crawl, as you could probably tell two decades later. And I would say this, if you're of my generation, it probably doesn't do you any good, honestly, to go back and watch this episode of Monday Nitro. Because all it will bring to you are bad memories and pain. Sometimes going back in the past, you can... You can Find positive things and you can you can get good experiences and you can relive some joy. There is no joy associated with this. It is only pain. If you're younger and you aren't emotionally connected to WCW in any way, you aren't emotionally connected to the Monday Night Wars era or anything like that, admittedly, you could try to understand it. You could try to respect the, the perspective. You could try to feel it, but you're not going to. You're not. Like for those hardest of hardcore fans, the closest that they would get is if all of a sudden an AEW and New Japan immediately folded and went away in like a week's time or a month's time. Like that, that's, and that's not even a full equivalent when you look at just overall size, but from an impact on, and meaning to those of you that are big fans of those two companies, that gives you an idea. Like imagine if New Japan went away tomorrow and then within a month, AEW was gone too. I certainly hope to hell that never happens. Because I've lived that before. ECW folding. WCW folding and being bought by Vince McMahon. I've seen that. I've lived that. I've experienced that. It sucks. And it wasn't worth it. It did so much damage to the business. We've never The business has never recovered. It's never recovered. And it only gets worse as time goes along. So I'm going to be thinking about it today and frankly probably all weekend. Thinking about WCW and ECW too. And you know, thinking about those good memories. But this show, March 26, 2001, 20 years ago, that last WCW Monday Nitro, is frankly one of the worst wrestling memories of my lifetime. Like this goes on the list, it's on the same tier as Owen Hart dying at Over the Edge 99. And you say that's crazy and stupid, yes, but we're wrestling fans so we all have crazy and stupid in us. But when you talk about impact and meaning and significance, like it, it emotionally hit me in a similar fashion and continues to do so all these years later. 
and realizing that it was 20 years ago now just makes me realize like how much times have changed.